All right, so what I have right here is every flagship true wireless earbud that actually features active noise cancellation. To put an end to a single debate I always see all the time, where one of these, let's just take an AirPod, is the best active noise cancellation earbud available in the market. Well, is it so? I've seen a lot of reviews of articles suggesting these are the best active noise canceling earbuds in the market, but they don't have data to prove anything. So even though marketing company might be advertising like something like the Sony's to be number one, unfortunately they're not. As I conduct a series of tests, spoken to sound engineers and professional musician on their input on how I could actually do this type of test to get a most accurate result as much as possible to find out who truly does produce the best active noise cancellation earbuds available in the market. So we test that with a bunch of different frequencies as well as the transparency mode. Also go ahead and cover the hardware, battery life, and more. So this is the ultimate comparison to see which one of these earbuds truly is the king and which one is the best one for you. So using a sound meter, uh, which I slightly modified, seems to be the most accurate way to really see which earbud is really blocking the most background sound for the best overall active noise cancellation experience. So I created a sound clip, including real life city sound with random traffic, with honks, cars, people yelling, as well as an airplane taking off, as I feel that's one of the most extreme things for active noise cancellations to really perform. And then a common cafe, to top it off with some pink noise. Why pink noise? Well, pink noise is a type of random noise that most sound engineers commonly use to test active noise cancellation, as it contains equal energy per octave and has consistent distribution of sound power, audible frequency spectrum. So in this video, we have the second generation AirPods Pros. If you're wondering what case this is, it's over there where I cover all my accessories I have on my personal device. Then we got the Nothing Earbuds, which these things are actually really awesome. I'll review them more in just a little bit. But we got the Big King, the Bose Quiet Comfort Earbuds 2. There we go. And then Bose Rival, the Sony's WF-1000 XM4. A name that a robot will love. And then we got the Beats Fit Pro Iconic combo with the previous generation of the Beat Studio Buds. These are still for sale, brand new, so that's why they're in this video. But we also include the brand latest one, which is the Plus version, which honestly is my favorite design. But then we got Google Pixel Buds, as well as the Samsung's Galaxy Buds Pro. And we also have the entry level ones, which are the earphones air pro 3 which retail for just under 80 dollars and you can find them on sale most of the time for 55 bucks so creating this video wasn't at all easy it took me about three or four days almost a whole week just to prep all this so if you can highly appreciate it if you can actually leave this video a like it only takes two seconds of your time and i really do appreciate those because right now youtube changed their algorithm and i'm being slayed right now because they want more viewer interaction so please leave that like please i'll greatly appreciate it but back to the test at large so to cut all the brain bits out, these were the numbers. The control room for the street was 86.2 decibels. And in first place was the Bose getting 67.8. And third place was Google, as well as the Samsung Galaxy Buds. And in last place was actually the Beat Studio Buds Plus. But then I added foam tips I had laying around and it went from dead last to be in fourth place. I'll talk more about the foam tips in a little bit. And then moving along to the airplane takeoff decibel level. So the control room decibel level maxed at 86.8 decibels. So in first place was Bose because I was able to cancel all that to get a low 74.5. And second place was the AirPods Pro. And then last place was the Beats Fit Pro, which is shocking. Moving along to the cafe, the control room is 79.9 decibels and the AirPods Pros actually beat the Bose for the first time as they got 61.9 decibels that I was able to block. And in dead last was actually the Beats Studio Buds with memory foam, the regular ones, non-plus, non which I saw was kind of shocking. But then the, the most hardest test of them all was the pink noise test because the room was averaging 98.3 decibels and the Bose managed to keep majority of it out as it only averaged 69.8 decibel. Meanwhile, 
In second place was the AirPods Pros, followed by the Beats Studio Buds Wisdom and Refilm Tips, and then in last place was the Nothing Earbuds. So by tallying up all these scores on the max decibel they were able to block out, the average ranking was the Bose as it got an average ranking of 1.25 and third place AirPods Pros as well as the Google Pixel Buds Pros. And last place was actually the Earfun Air Pro 3 which wasn't too bad, it wasn't that far off from everything else. But the Beat Studio Buds Plus without the memory foam tips was pretty close to it as these two technically tied. Other ties was the Nothing Ear 2 as well as the Sony's wireless earbuds. So the results were really interesting. But one thing for sure, when I installed memory foam tips on the Beats, it was actually helping it enhance its performance. I'm gonna test this out more in a future video. Feel free to pause any of the charts to have a better understanding. So now knowing all this, this definitely does change my thoughts on my daily driver, which used to be the Beats Studio Buds Plus. Because these were my day two, due to the fact that they just look fantastic, but also feature impressive specs for the price because the Beat Studio Buds Plus only sell for brand new retail price for $169. I'm sure you can find them on sale during the upcoming holidays. These are still new, they just recently hit the market, but these things are fantastic because they have a great overall battery life. 36 hours with the earbuds in the case in total. Earbuds individually can last nine hours and they're actually IPX4 water industry rating, the earbuds, not the case. And they also take advantage of Apple's features as well since they are owned by Beats. They do feature a bunch of impressive iOS features built into your iPhone, which makes it super convenient if you're already in the Apple ecosystem. Now they don't have auto ear detection, but to some, this may be a pro because honestly, I prefer not having this sensitivity. It made testing this video easier, but also allows me to just freely just remove an earbud and just continue listening and place it back in. It's a personal preference, honestly, but these are extremely well balanced. They sit really flush in my ear and they actually have physical buttons. I actually have to press on it if I wanna do some type of command. And it's super convenient toggling between the different modes that it has. They're not that expensive compared to some high caliber ones that we have here on the table. $169 is a lot better than losing $300 if you lose the bows. Yes, it is a con that they don't feature wireless charging capability, but honestly, I prefer charging with the USB-C because it only takes a couple minutes to fully charge these things versus leaving on the dock for a couple hours. And the sound and quality, it's not bad. Really good, especially if you enjoy bass-rich songs like EDM or rap or hip-hop. And then, of course, they still make these. You can still find them brand new. They do sell for $150, but during like Amazon Prime Day, people were finding these for $100 brand new. And I think that's a good selling point because the buds themselves, can, the earbuds themselves can last up to eight hours and the case and everything in total about 26 hours. They're exactly the same size as the new Beat Studio Buds. Dimensions, everything is identical. So working out with this is identical to this. And these things stay flushing my ear, super balanced and they don't easily fall off, which is quite impressive for earbuds that don't have a built-in wing. And of course, they take advantage of Apple's iOS features as well as the Find My capability. Sound quality, slightly more improved on this one. Now, as for the Nothing Ear 2, these things are awesome. I really do love them. They have a third-party app that allows you to customize everything. They do feature ear detection, which was challenging for this video because uh, even though you turn it off, they will still be enabled. You just can't toggle the different modes unless you're placing your ear, but I managed to work around with this was the Play-Doh clay thing. But that's how I was able to accomplish them from allowing me to continue using active noise cancellation. And for daily usage, like the cafe and stuff like that, this is all you really need. And they stay in place in your ear really well. Microphone quality is actually really good. And the case itself has this grippy texture, which I noticed if you own a Tesla, you can actually wireless charge it and it won't slide, it, uh, slide around, which is interesting. But the case itself does support wireless charging. These are IPX4 wire industry system rated and they fit perfectly fine in my ear and they do provide a bunch of different fits. The app is amazing. It's fully customizable. You can connect two devices at once. The EQ settings fully customizable as well. And I think these actually sound better than the beats if you actually prefer listening to a lot of EDM or bass rich songs. The earbuds can last up to five hours individually, which is plenty of time for any workout. And the case and everything in total, about 36 hours. And if you don't like this white color, you could get like a black version, which comes in this smoke black 
case, which doesn't look bad. And these use physical buttons to toggle between different modes. Exactly like AirPods, actually, AirPods Pros. Now the AirPods Pros second generation, even though they didn't really win overall, they're still my go-to because if you already live in the Apple ecosystem, this is super convenient to connect to your Mac computers, your other Apple devices. In addition to that, if you have an Apple TV, you can actually utilize spatial audio, which allows you to experience that 3D cinematic immersion and you take advantage of a lot of Apple features as well as upcoming features that's coming out in the near future for these. Because not currently we only have active noise cancellation and transparency mode, but pretty soon we'll have the speak capability where the earbuds can detect when you're talking and go from noise cancellation to transparency mode and reverse back after once you're done with that conversation. And putting these on technically still is somewhat of a fashion statement. I'm sure everybody is already familiar with this look. You got companies like Nothing Ear 2 copying the design with the weird stem. Don't hide that, we know what you're doing. But there's nothing wrong with that. These things are perfectly balanced. I could work out with them. They're IPX4 water and dust resistant rating, including the case. And the case has a unique find my capability, which will actually show you an error when you're getting close to your misplaced AirPods. So not only can you track the earbuds individually, you can also track the case overall. And the case actually has a built-in speaker that can actually play sound and give you feedback if it's charging. Super amazing, really loaded compared to all these other earbuds we have on the table in terms of using all its features features possible because even the case has features so it's really hard to beat the AirPods Pros for everyday consumers they truly are a Swiss Army knife now the Galaxy Buds Pros these are gonna be my replacement because I don't travel a lot I don't need the best active noise cancellation for the airport but the reason why I like these so much over the Beats now is due to the fact how small they fit in my ear I work out when I'm wearing earbuds I'm more at the gym that's just that's just me the case itself is also the smallest one of the group and it does feature a wireless charging capability. Yes, you can charge with USB-C, but unlike the AirPods or all the other earbuds that we have on the table, these are actually IPX7 wire and dust resistant rating, about three meters underwater they can survive. And the sound quality isn't that bad. Even though I have these paired on my iPhone, which limitates me because I cannot use the Samsung app to fully customize the EQ settings, by default, these sound phenomenal, and these you just pair with Bluetooth, and that's it. I have access to I have access to transparency mode and active noise cancellation by simply just tapping and long holding. It just toggles on the go. But if I was using an Android device, I could definitely utilize the intelligent conversation mode, which these have. So if I was an Android device, somebody's talking to me, I'm on active noise cancellation. It'll toggle transparency mode and will reverse back as soon as I I'm done with that conversation. But these are my go-to due to the fact they're flush and unlike other earbuds, the built-in wing is built into the earbud, which is already ridiculously small and it does an excellent job to stay in put because these hardly, rarely ever want to fall off my ears to the point where I need to readjust them. These always stay on, so runners, you're going to probably really appreciate these as well. And although these do cost $230, you can find them on sale most of the time for $180. As time makes the video, it's actually on sale on Best Buy, so look, look at those links if you're interested in one of these earbuds. The earbuds themselves can last up to 8 hours, and the case and everything in total about 28 hours, which is really good for something this size. But moving along, the Google Pixel Buds, it's like a egg shaped like capsule and these are also very small but they're hard to work out with because they're not really well balanced compared to the, its competitors these been out on the market for a little over two years now they do sit flush in my ear pretty low key but again i just can't work out with these and something tells me in the near future google does plan on replacing these with a the second generation version of these which could be coming out sometime next year in the springtime and these rarely go on sale because at the time I make the video, you can still find them for the full retail price for $199. I'm sure during holiday sales, they do go on sale rarely, but it's hard for me to really recommend these, even though they do feature wireless charging capabilities. But when it comes to overall sound quality, it kind of doesn't sound great. It's honestly dead last when you compare it against all the other earbuds that we have on the table in terms of audio quality and as well as transparency mode, which we'll find out in a little bit. But they do have an impressive battery life because 
because each earbud can last up to 11 hours and the case and everything in total about 31 hours. Now the Quiet Comfort 2 from Bose. These things are big. They perform really well for a reason because they have they have a big size and they're also the most expensive ones because you can find these retailing for around $300. They do go on sale for $50 off sometimes. At the time I make the video, I believe there is a sale. But when you place them on, they're pretty big and definitely noticeable. They do feature a third party app, which is great because everything is customizable, including the active noise cancellation. You can modify it to your own personal preference. They give you a lot of great tools and you can actually run two devices connected at once. The case itself does not feature wireless charging, which is a shame. And for being the largest one of the group, battery life isn't really anything impressive. The case and everything in total about 24 hours. Earbuds themselves can last up to six hours. The earbuds are wire industry resistant radians. They do have IPX4. And when it comes to overall sound quality, these do sound really great. These are definitely my top three earbuds in terms of overall sound quality. But not the best if you love bass, just FYI. But they're definitely pleasant to listen to EDM songs if needed. But they're definitely comfortable to use and wear. So if you travel a lot, you're not really a very active user or you plan on using these to go running and stuff like that, I would highly recommend for like daily use, like cafe studies, traveling, public transportation, city usage, and all that good stuff because the microphone, these are actually really good too. Now, as for the Sonys, these things are outdated now, unfortunately, because at the time I make the video, the newer version came out and I'm probably already got my hands on it. I'm working on it to make this into an updated video. But because of that, I think these will become a better value because because as a time making the video, they normally would retail for $300 just like the Bose. But if you could find these for $50 or less, it would be a good deal. The case itself does feature wireless charging capability, super small compared to everything else. But the earbuds themselves are very large, but they do utilize memory foam tips. But as you've seen, they didn't really perform really well in random situations. They only perform really well in fixed situations like pink noise as you witness. So this probably is like a little trick that Sony did to make these earbuds really do perform well in a fixed environment, but realistically, we don't live in a control environment. But when it comes to overall music quality, audio files, I'm sure do appreciate the Sony's over all the other earbuds that we have on the table because they actually use the LDAC codex and they feature bone conducting technology which said to be able to give you and deliver the best call quality experience possible. And I could completely confirm, but to be honest, modern day earbuds in general sound really great nowadays. And then they are water resistant IPX4, eight hours under a single charge for the earbuds and the case and everything in total about 16 hours. And these also allow you to connect two devices at once. And the sound quality is actually one of the best too. Now the Beats Fit Pro, these things been out on the market for quite some time now. They retail for $200 typically, but you can find them on sale since they're Beats. They are using this very large case, which unfortunately doesn't feature wireless charging capabilities. The Bose doesn't either, but they do utilize the Apple ecosystem because they do have some iOS features built into our iPhones. So if you live in the Apple ecosystem, these will easily utilize the Apple ecosystem because these actually feature spatial audio as well. There are IPX4, they can deliver up to seven hours of battery life, but the case and everything in total about 24 hours. And they sit extremely flush, which still feature the built-in wing because these are actually the only earbuds that we have that actually have a built-in wing like this that does an excellent job hooking up. But be warned, hold on to your receipt if you actually purchase these because my friend, he says these are super comfortable to me. After an hour, these start to hurt. So these are not for me, but active runners will definitely want to utilize these too because these actually physically do have a hook that stay put in your ear when you're doing active activities. So these are easily designed for the athletic user, extreme athletic user, I should say. And then lastly, I have the EarFunds Air Pro 3, long name, but these, are really great because as you saw in our results, they weren't too far apart from some heavy calipers. These don't have like any ear detection capabilities. As soon as you put them on, they're on. But these sell for $80, but you can find them floating around $55. At the time I get the video, it's actually on sale. And for $50, these aren't bad, especially if you have an experience of losing earbuds because I much rather lose these than $300 pair of headphones and having to rebuy them again. And they're super lightweight that you could easily work out with them. They won't move around or fall off. Ever so often you do have to readjust them, but that's after like 30 minutes or 40 minutes after uh, during your workouts. Nine hours of battery life, case and everything in total. 
45 hours. Works on any phone as long as it has Bluetooth. Just like all the other earbuds we've seen. And the sound quality isn't so bad. And then it also features transparency mode. And from the real world results here, take a quick listen of every earbud real quick. So you have a general understanding which one delivers the best natural sounding transparency mode. Can you hear me clearly when I'm speaking in a normal conversation tone while the headphones are in transparency mode? Can you hear me clearly when I'm speaking in a normal conversation tone while the headphones are in transparency mode? Can you hear me clearly when I'm speaking in a normal conversation tone while the headphones are in transparency mode? Can you hear me clearly when I'm speaking in a normal conversation tone while the headphones are in transparency mode? Can you hear me clearly when I'm speaking in a normal conversation tone while the headphones are in transparency mode? Can you hear me clearly when I'm speaking in a normal conversation tone while the headphones are in transparency mode? Can you hear me clearly when I'm speaking in a normal conversation tone while the headphones are in transparency mode? Can you hear me clearly when I'm speaking in a normal conversation tone while the headphones are in transparency mode? Can you hear me clearly when I'm speaking in a normal conversation tone while the headphones are in transparency mode? Can you hear me clearly when I'm speaking in a normal conversation tone while the headphones are in transparency mode? So the Sony's actually take that one hands down. The sound just sounds natural. And then second place to me is the Samsung, which also deliver a natural sounding experience. And then third place was the AirPods Pro's second generation. Due to the fact that it was clear, nice to listen to, but you could obviously tell there was some software involved to tweak the audio, the vocals to making it sound less robotic. Then the Bose sounds good. Beats Fit Pro, good. Google Pixel Buds, they also, also sound all right. The Nathan Earbuds, sound a bit mono but still doable the beats plus and the non plus both sound about the same so they were all right but the ear funds definitely do sound like you had earbuds on so when it comes to active noise cancellation for travelers and such i will definitely recommend the bose quiet comforts too for day-to-day -day use the airpods pros they fit right there from being the swiss army knife because not only were they not too far apart from the bose but they definitely did perform and hold at high caliber when it comes to comparing against all the other their competitors available in the market. So AirPods are actually a fair price. Unfortunately with these Sony's, they only do a good job when it comes to like transparency mode, sound quality, and having a conversation. But if you would ask me which one would be my, my personal pick, because the only time I personally will wear earbuds is when I'm working out. And these Samsungs are super small, they don't take up that much space, and they're super slick when you're wearing them. These are actually my personal pick, but let me know in the comment section which one of these earbuds would you take if you could only have one. I'm still sticking with the Samsungs. I, I'm not really a headphone or earbud type of person, only when I'm working out. So, but now you know what's available, what can actually fit your lifestyle. So feel free to comment down below if you have a suggestion to add more earbuds to the test and share your thoughts and opinions. Which one of these are you gonna personally pick? I'd love to also know your feedback as well. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. Make sure to check out this video over here if you select the AirPods so you know what are the best accessories available in the market as well as the accessories I'm personally using. Thanks so much for watching.